This video is a demonstration of using a Schmidt trigger to clean up a noisy analog signal. It corresponds to section 17.4.3 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook and is part of Lab 4. And because it's part of a lab, I'm not going to tell you everything you need to set up this demo because part of that is what you need to figure out for the lab. What I am going to show you is how to set up the Analog Discovery 2 to produce two signals, a sine wave and a noise signal, that you will average together to make the noisy signal that you feed into your Schmidt trigger. All right, so let's take a look at waveforms. First of all, I'm going to need a power supply for the Schmidt trigger. And here I'm doing everything with the Analog Discovery 2. I'm not doing separate recording with Teradac. So I'm actually only limited by the voltages that the Schmidt trigger will accept for its power supply. So I could have picked 5 volts, which is a perfectly acceptable value, or I picked, in this case, 3.3 volts, which is also an acceptable value. If you do the 3.3 volts uh, power supply, you can also use the signal with Teradac. All right, so I've got my power supply set up to be 3.3 volts, and I can turn it on. All right, now let's look at the waveform generator. This is where most of the setup is occurring. All right, I set it up, first of all, to use two channels, not just one. Waveform generator one is going to be my sine wave, and waveform generator two is going to be my noise signal. All right, so sine wave for waveform generator one. Here I'm picking 100 hertz, which is a fairly slow signal. Um, if I was trying to record this thing with Teradac, I might want to go even slower. Um, the amplitude I've made 1.5 volts and the offset 1.65 volts. The offset here is half the power supply voltage so that I can go above and below it and not hit the lower or upper power rail. And that's why the 1.5 volts and uh, 1.65 volts, that takes me from 0.15 volts as my low voltage up to 3.15 volts as my high voltage on channel one. Channel two, meanwhile, the second uh, waveform generator, I've got an amplitude here of zero volts, so I'm not really putting out any signal, but an offset of 1.65 volts. What happens when I average those two things together? Well, I'm always going to be taking this value, whatever it is, and averaging it with 1.65 volts. So it's going to be closer to 1.65 volts than what it starts on. It's going to basically going to be having the amplitude. And that means my signal here is not going to swing very far, but it'll be doing so with no noise. So let's go over to the scope and do a single run here. And you can see we indeed have a very clean sine wave. Oh, I didn't turn the waveform generator on. Very clean sine wave with um, an output that's a square wave. The square wave is going all the way from 0 to 3.3 volts. The sine wave, as you can see, is not swinging from 0.15 to 3.15 because that averaging with the second channel, which is at 1.65 volts with no noise added. All right. Clearly, the Schmidt trigger here is working. It's triggering. We can see that it's triggering always at the same two places on uh, the waveform. And that's exactly what we would expect when we have a clean sine wave and run it through a Schmidt trigger. So everything here seems to be working. Now we can go back to the waveform generator and say, let's put a lot of noise on here. We can go up to maybe 1.5 volts of noise. So we'll have a signal, again, it's going between 0.15 and 3.15 volts. And if I average these two signals, waveform generator 1, waveform generator 2, the average signal is still going to be in that same voltage range, 0.15 volts to 3.15 volts. Notice the frequency, though. The sine wave is at 100 hertz. The, the frequency for the noise is 100 times higher, 10 kilohertz. That means I will be changing the voltage value on the noise signal 100 times in each cycle of the sine wave. And so it'll really be noise. Let's take a look at what that does. So we go over to the scope and we do a single run here. Now you can see we have a very noisy sine wave. You can still kind of see the sine wave because I'm 
the noise is only the same magnitude as the sine wave itself. Um, but that's enough that we get lots of false triggering. Here, instead of having a nice screen, clean on and off, we have many switching back and forth between the on and the off. And that's the sort of thing that Schmidt triggers are supposed to clean up. Here, the Schmidt trigger is clearly failing to clean up the noise. And that's because the noise is bigger than our hysteresis voltage. The signal swings far enough that it goes from the lower threshold to the upper threshold and back just as a result of the noise. So let's take a look at what happens if we reduce the noise. Try to pick something that's less than the hysteresis voltage. And I think you know, half a volt will be enough reduction in the noise um, to make things clean. Let's try that and see. So we'll do a single run here. Looks clean. Keep doing single runs. And each time you can see the noise waveform changes. The square wave is always clean. It's always just one transition on each edge. But you notice the transitions don't always occur in exactly the same places. The uh, noise is enough to disrupt when the transition happens, when, we do, when do we first cross that threshold. But it, we don't cross the threshold twice. We have to wait all the way until we've got to the other part of the waveform before we've moved enough to actually um, get that second transition. So here, because we're less than the hysteresis voltage, everything looks nice and clean. And we can also try doing a little bit more noise, um, something that's maybe just a little over the threshold. Maybe 900 millivolts will do it. And let's see what that does. Looks clean. Ah, but this time we got an extra transition over here. Looks clean, looks clean. So most of the time it's, it's clean, but every once in a while it'll make a crummy transition. It's not seeing very many here. So it's, we're just sort of right at the hysteresis voltage. We saw, oh, there was an extra one. And I clicked again and just, it went away. So we occasionally, but not very often, get an extra transition like there. So if you want to see transitions a little bit more reliably, up the noise just a little bit. We're sort of right on the edge there. And now we should see them a little more often. Yep, there. Nope, there, twice. There again. So it's fairly easy to see that as we increase the noise, we're going to get more of these extra transitions. And if we stay below the hysteresis voltage and the noise, we don't get any extra transitions. And that's really what the Schmidt triggers are designed for. That's what they're used for in most circuits, is to take a noisy signal and turn it into a clean digital signal without extra transitions because of noise.